Hello, Jim Hodges here, Newman here. Newman is a 15, 16 month old Airedale who's come in for our residency training program. Very good boy, very smart, uh, very strong puppy. He's used to controlling other dogs. He's got a, a prey drive. Sometimes it's not so much, sometimes it's a little bit stronger. I think it depends on, on what he's seeing and what he's watching. He gets distracted very easily uh, with other prey, uh, with other things that are happening. It's our job to keep his attention when we're working. Even now, we have squirrels over here, we have a kitty cat over here, he's checking those out. When I'm just standing here and taking it easy, I have no problems. His job is to be right here by my side. When we start working, he needs to pay attention and do the things that I ask him to do. He cannot run off to the side and and believe me, before two weeks ago, he would have been going after all kinds of things that get him turned on. He has learned and he has understood the fact that he has to behave around cats at, at our home, but that is something that we've been testing on a regular basis. We want to do that with our cats, uh, with our children that are in our lives. We want him to see these children, these cats, and understand that they are part of life and that his job is not to act on them. And why do I say that? Because children a lot of times can look like prey, especially to a, a prey-driven dog. When I talk about act like prey, they're running around, they're stumbling, they're waving their hands, they're screaming, all things an injured animal may do, okay? So that can turn a dog on. What do we do? We do our best to socialize. How do we do that? We might have him in a place or down beside us when they're around and let them run and play, his job is to stay there. When he's in a calm environment, we take precautions and we try to teach him how to say hey in a nice, calm situation. And then we reward and praise him. I'm not against using treats. You know I'm not a treat trainer, but I use treats all the time to teach and to help take the edge off and get uh, a distracted animal to pay a little more attention to me. It's also important that we involve our body and soul and our spirit. We want to have fun. We want to encourage him when we give these commands. It's not about sounding like a robot and just giving him uh, humdrum commands, especially for a dog like this that needs that positivity in his life as much as possible. We want to get him excited to work. Yes, he has to work. We're going to make him work. When we ask him to do something, he has to do it. If he does it, we're going to praise him. If he does it, we're going to bite him, okay? Uh, we're not going to bite him to a point that we're intimidating or dominating, but we are going to make it his uh, point to realize that we're in control. We're also, and you're not going to see this at home, people, but we're also going to do th other things to show that we're the leader. Uh, making him down for his food or, or work for his food. I prefer a down in his case. Uh, making him sit at doors doing little things that put us in the position that we're the leader. We're going to start doing obedience. When he does what I want, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to try to encourage him. If he does something wrong, I'm going to try to bite him. And it's going to be a tap of the leash. Again, uh, after I bite and he does what I want, I'm going to come back and praise him. If he gets distracted, you may see me take a step off. I'm taking the step off to get his focus on me, okay? And by me stepping out the back door, so to speak, and he's not watching, and I tap the leash because it got tight, he's going to start to understand that, well, I need to watch where mom and dad are, are going. I need to pay attention. Yes, I'm going to look at the world right now, but uh, I have to understand where they are and do what they ask me to do. So having said all that, let's get started. You ready, man? Let's go. So let's go with that loose leash beside us. As I said, we have cats. Now, let's go. So a little tap. I don't know if you noticed that, because he was wanting to look behind at the cat. Good boy. And in the beginning, it's a short leash, okay? We want it to be short so that we can control it. We don't want him walking out in front of us. When he starts to get out in front of us, two things happen. One is he becomes the leader, and two, when he gets out in front of us, we're not part of the equation, and he can start to act on what his impulses are instead of what our impulses are. If he starts to go out in front, I'm going to tap back on the leash. If he starts to go this way, I'm going to tap here. The central figure here is I'm going to have my hand by my side and I'm going to tap to my side, okay? 
My goal is to keep him here. As he learns and as we become the leader, which doesn't happen overnight, you know, we're talking uh, 6, 10, 12 weeks of consistent leadership and working with him. But as we become the leader, then we can start giving him. Let's go. Uh, extra leash, okay? And he knows to walk with us. I'm going to praise him. Good boy. While we're walking. Could I give him a treat now? I could. If I wanted to give him a treat and he's doing good, I would give it to him while he's doing good. Okay? Sit. Good boy. Now sit. What's my hand signal? Just like that. He's supposed to sit and he's supposed to hold it. If he didn't sit or if he got up, I would go, no, sit, a little tap, and then come back and praise. Again, he has to hold the sit for me. Good boy. And I want to let him know that I'm happy. Okay? So when I step off like this and he holds it, I'm going to praise. Good boy. I'm not going to be so excited that he may break the command. If he broke the command, I'd have to take him back to the sit. Good. Let's go. So again, sit. Good boy. Nice. So I didn't give him a treat there. I have given him a treat in the past. With him, and, and the way I feel with him, and we'll talk about it as we go on, if you watched other videos, I like to give break. Break is my release. When I break a dog, that is me telling him he's through, he can get up, he doesn't have to work. He still can't pull on a leash, he can't jump on me, he can't do anything like that that we don't want. But he's not at work. Now he can start to look again, and I'm going to let him know when I want him by gaining his attention. Okay? Let's go. Let's turn back around this way. a boy. Sit. Good. So the next thing I was getting ready to talk about were the treats. I use treats a lot with, with dogs. In this case, for the recall command, and I also use it for the down command, which I said I'll talk about in a minute. See, I'm pulling a treat out. He doesn't know it, okay? I want it to be a reward that he's not working for right now, or he doesn't think he's working for the reward. He thinks he's working for me. Newman, come. He comes. He sits. And a boy. Pet, treat. Good boy. Now, when I told him to come, he had to come to me. On leash, if he didn't come, I would have tapped the leash to me. When he came to me, he should sit automatically. And you notice how he's holding the sit. He came to me. I petted him. I gave him a treat. Told him, good boy. Break. Or I could have had him come to me and broke him and give him the treat. We can mix those things up if we want, okay? Good boy. I don't like him to be working for a treat. Whenever I start using a treat like this, hey, I use this to sort of teach what I want, sort of like I did with the down command. The other thing about the treat, especially with little children, I don't give a treat like this, causing a dog to bite on my fingers. I hold it out and let him nicely take it out of the palm of my hand. Notice when he took that, what did I do? I came right in and pet him while he was chewing it. Right. Good boy. Let's go. Come on. Sit. And signal. Down. Good. Now, because he is a, a dominant guy, he resisted down for the longest period of time. Okay? What does that mean? We're going to make him down. Okay? But I don't mind using the tree when he does it successfully. If he doesn't do it successfully, I won't give him a treat. And I will not give him a treat every single time. I'll pick and choose when I want to do it. And when I do it, it's because he did something very good for me. Break. Down. That a boy. Good boy, pet. I think I'll give you a treat. Good boy. Sorry about that. Good. Good. So down means down. If I tell him to down, he has to down. If he doesn't stay down, I'm going to tap the leash. I'm not going to tap it tremendously hard, but I'm going to tap it so he understands, and I'm going to tell him, here's his head. I'm going to go, no, down, good boy. I'm going to tap it. I'm not going to pull. When I pull the leash, I do the work for him. And in his case, it's probably going to create more resistance because he's going to pull back on you. So it's always a tap. The tap just makes him have to think about what we want and not what we're trying to force him to do. Good boy. Great. Let's go. So the next command, 
twice. Good boy. I'm proud of him. Twice we tell him to get on the bed. He can lay down, sit down, stand up. He can watch cats, do whatever. He's got to stay there. He can easily do the place command for an hour and a half, two hours at a time. In fact, and I probably need to put the, uh, the photo on my website, and as I said, he's got a very strong prey drive. In fact, I actually didn't think it was that strong when this happened, but he, was, he lives in the house with us. So in the evenings, I'll get him out and do downstays and do places just like this while I'm sitting around reading, watching television, or doing whatever. And I have my other dogs out, and I actually will have a cat or two in the house. Well, I had him on his bed in my house, probably like window uh, evening number three or four. It was very early in the process. And he was laying there, curled up, just taking it easy, and a cat came and got on the bed. It just shocked him completely. He handled it very well. I actually took photos. I'll try to put a picture of it on the website. Right. But that one isolated instance which if I had to base it on that instance, showed me that he didn't really have a strong prey drive, okay? Well, guess what? After that fact, as we started testing with more cats, outside especially, I haven't really seen it inside, which can be interesting, and we'll talk about that, but uh, I've seen that prey drive a little more in effect. So now, because I've seen him react to a cat uh, outside or what have you, I'm gonna be very careful about introducing him to the cat. That's why uh, earlier in the conversation I talked about children. We want to take it nice and easy. I don't think he's got aggression in him. Uh, I don't see that, but he is strong-willed. We want to make sure that that instinct doesn't trigger as an impulse for him, that he starts to learn that uh, children are a part of the family. In fact, I would have to say that that is something that all Airedales, besides that smartness and that resistance, that prey drive is there because they were originally bred to hunt. All right, let's go. So now you saw me uh, do the DOWN from the side. Sit. Good boy. Down. Good. This time I'm not going to give him a trick. He's in a down. He has to hold it. If I wanted to, I could tell him to stay. Now he's packing his bags and he's there for a while. That means stay, you're going to be in that down position for a prolonged time. He could chew a toy, he could smell the ground, he could roll on the side as far as I'm concerned. I just want him to know he's going to be there. I think it's very important when you've got a strong-willed dog that you teach the down stay and in the beginning, every other day or so, put him in a 10 to 15 minute down stay and that's inside or outside. You go ahead and do what you need to do. If he gets up, you've got to take him back. No, no, down, stay. Good boy. Remember, after every consequence or bite, we always praise. Remember the consequences not to intimidate or dominate, break his spirit, hurt him, or have him fear you, okay? But we always come back and provide that modicum of praise to let him know that we're happy with him, okay? So he's in that stay. As we practiced, his owner, his dad and I the other day, we practiced stay can be used to walk out of the room and go into another room. All we would do is use that same open palm, stay, and walk out. If he tried to come through the room or out the room, we would take the leash, but we start everything with the leash and then the tab and then nothing. We would tap him back into the room, no, 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 stay, and immediately walk right back out. So he's not really paying any attention. You know, we have him in a stay. If you look at him, he's looking around. I'm gonna get his attention and see what we can do. This is sort of like the off lead uh, recall or come command. Of course, he's on leash, but it's my way of simulating it. Watch what I do to get his attention. Newman, hey, look what I got. Come. Good boy. Good boy, break. Now, you would ask, because I had him in a down stay, why he was allowed to get up, because actually I didn't give him a break. As far as I was concerned, when I called his name and started going through this process, I am teaching him an off-leash recall command so he was allowed to get up. If he just got up on his own, we would put him right back. Let's go, buddy, come on. Good oh boy. Next thing, and this is good for teaching him to get in vehicles or what have you. Come on, man. Load up. Atta boy. I'll give you a little treat for that. Notice. Good boy. 
Brake. To get off is brake, it's not down. Uh, notice I gave him a treat then, and I didn't have to dig it out of my pocket. When I do use a treat, because I like to give my dogs treats, okay? When I give a treat, I don't want to let them know I'm giving them a treat. I expect them to do what I ask them to when I give them the command. The uh, treat is just like a bonus or a commission for doing a job the way I asked them to do it. Ready? Let's go. So the next thing we're going to do is the heel command. Sit. And this is important. The heel command is, good boy, is an imaginary box beside us. His job on the heel command is to stay tight in the box. Our job is to keep him. Okay, we may have to turn or what have you. He's supposed to watch our turn and then follow right into the box with us. When we stop, he sits. All right, you ready, man? Hand signal like this, heel. So I'm gonna take a few steps, I stop. Ah, uh, that was a little slow that time, okay? So when I see something happen not quite the way I want it, I'm gonna come back and do it a couple of more times in a row. If he's that slow next time, I'm gonna buy him, heel. Good boy, that was okay to me. So now we're gonna do it again, heel. So you ask, well wait a minute, let me stop. Good, and then we step off and he has to hold it, break. So you ask, why did I do it two times, especially in the beginning when we're teaching? If he messes up on something, I want to go right back and try to repeat it two times consecutively the right way. Why? Because a lot of times we don't get to do the repetitions to teach him. If we were to do it one more time and stop and not work him again till tomorrow, we didn't effectively teach him the right way to do something. I hope that makes sense. If not, just feel free to give me a call and I'll answer it. Ready? One more time. Heel. So we're here. Step off. He follows right back in. Good boy. Now, break. If you go back and look at the video, because he's got a long back, he's got sort of like a poodle back, it looks like he's getting behind me. But as long as he's not stepping back and trying to sit whenever we stop, I'm very happy with that. I can't think of anything else right now to... Uh, Watch out. Good boy. What you got? Good boy. I can't think of anything else right now that we need to touch base on. I think he's done a wonderful job. If you have any questions, you pick up the phone and uh, you give me a call and we'll go from there. Jim Hodges, jimhodgesdogtraining.com, 336-945-3232. Thank you so much and God bless.